Hey, what's up? This is Chosen. Hope you're having a fantastic day. This is going to be a Raid Shadow Legends video getting you caught up. We have got some madness going on. We've got Polarium addressing the Hydra patch 7.00 drama going on with blasting your Hydra teams and ruining them. We have got a new Season 8 Forge Pass. We've got a couple 10Xs going on in the Summoning Portal and lots of stuff happening as we get into the middle of the week here. Let's get into it. Alrighty, now as a lot of you probably know by now, I did a dedicated video on this yesterday and there's been all sorts of stuff on Reddit and, and different sites and stuff and different Discord servers about the drama with the Hydra that happened with a change. Polarium snuck in right here under the other improvements and battle fixes that they did. The Too Long Didn't Watch quick version of it is they adjusted to make the Hydra Head of Decay destroy massive amounts of HP and it was completely demolishing any champion that has a lot of healing or play says aoe leech and stuff like that so it was completely ruining people's hydra teams because of that ability right there on the head of decay but then early this morning as of a couple hours ago we did finally get plarium to address this there was so much so much uh blowback to this change that i kind of predicted in my video last night that they would address this first thing in the morning and that's exactly what happened they came out with this official announcement saying they would like to address the recent hydra changes and that the fix in the 7.0 update corrected a long-standing bug in which the almighty decay passive destroyed the incorrect percent of hp and then the formula was fixed now and the passive works as initially intended but what happened is initially intended is completely demolishing people's teams because they let the hydra function a certain way for like over a year so people have already adjusted to fight that boss and now when you come through and make a change like this it just completely ruins people's accounts basically if they're trying to fight the hydra so it ends up being something that is not above board to change like that so they say seeing how this change has negatively impacted the already established team compositions and hydra dedicated healing champions we made the decision to roll back this and fix the uh, description of the almighty decay passive so it can accurately represent a passives mechanic so they're going to be making some changes that will alleviate some of the awful things happening in the hydro now we don't know exactly what this is going to be it looks like this is a win it looks like polarium is doing right by the raid game and community but this is another one of those you know the polarium has stopped using the word soon because they got so much backlash for three years that now they're like traumatized from using that word so you can see here it says these changes will be implemented in the nearest future so we don't know what nearest future is it could be tomorrow it could be next week but unfortunately the hydra is going to be ending today you can see that we've got the 18 hours and eight minutes and i did have one or two of my teams that got completely blown up and ruined by this change so i would say just do the best you can and, and get the chest that you can and then hopefully in the next rotation next week this gets fixed and some of your hydra teams are performing like you would expect and we are also getting forge pass season eight and it is going to be for the defiant set which is going to be defense plus 10 percent and then minus 15 percent damage from enemy aoe attacks and it is a two-piece set so this is basically just a super beefed up stalwart set great filler set for any tank that you've got especially in pvp where you've got tons of aoe damage coming in or different areas of the game where you're gonna be facing lots of the aoe attacks the hydra has lots of aoe abilities and stuff like that so a really really good filler option for anybody you've got that's kind of a support or a tanky type champion which is why over on the artifact sets tier list we have got it right here up in the s tier as one of the better sets in the game now we're always kind of looking at this every week or two and trying to kind of adjust some of these ratings so it my first gut reaction is it seems a little bit high on that rating so i'm going to talk with the team and see if we can come as a consensus to uh to adjust that a little bit i would probably slide it down like maybe towards the back end of S tier, like 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 around the, the, the Cruel set or so, like right here. But uh, nonetheless, it is a great filler set because it is a two-piece set. And those sets are super strong because they can fit in as a subset of a four-set build. So you can go with something like Regeneration plus Defiant and have a hyper tanky champion. 
and this all looks pretty standard in terms of forge passes i don't see anything super crazy or outlandish or different so i will get a full breakdown of the forge pass done and, and get that to you here later in the day or tomorrow breaking down every individual resource and the value that it brings and all that and we'll probably do a dedicated video on the forge pass and if i think it's worth it and if i'm going to be buying it on my account and all of that one thing i do want you to know is that some people out there get confused by thinking that this level 50 reward is going to be something that you're going to be getting just regardless but you are not you are only getting this level 50 reward if you get the gold pass they do show that down here on the bottom but you do need to buy that because that is what this is right here so the reward for the forge pass level is the full six piece legendary so you do have to buy the gold pass i know there's about 15 20 percent of people that get a little bit confused by that and another thing sometimes people get confused about in these forge passes is these weekly challenges you can actually do them and get back credit so like in week three you can do one of the challenges in week one at least that's how they've worked kind of in the past and how the last bolster pass one works so don't stress yourself out too hard over the weekly challenges you just want to make sure they're all done in the four weeks that the whole thing is going to be running and then for some of the summoning stuff going on in game, we're going to be getting 10 X's today and tomorrow. We've got one today for Pytheon, and then we've got one tomorrow for Ursaga Warcaller, the Void Legendary. Now, both of them, very solid champions, nothing wrong with them, but I don't anticipate these 10 X's to be very popular. They're not coinciding with anything. There's no CVC. There is no fragments, no fusions, no anything special going on in game. So I'm going to say for like 98, 99% of you, it's not really going to make sense to be pulling shards during the middle of the week. We'll have to see what Plarium comes up with heading into this weekend. And if we're going to be starting to get teasers for the next fusion or the next fragment champion here this week. And the stuff in game is all pretty standard, like your tournaments and events. There isn't going to be anything too noteworthy, just your typical standard anniversary type stuff that we've all been seeing for the last five, six weeks. Then as far as the shop is concerned, let's go through and see if there's anything really worth talking about here. Um, da -da 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 pack string okay i don't unfortunately i don't see anything super noteworthy all of this is pretty average or even below average i'm not seeing like a specialized pack that deserves a deep dive discussion the privilege pack may be decent value for people that are really in the early game but that's going to lose value as you get towards the end game um yeah i'm not seeing anything hyper noteworthy unfortunately I'm also trying to test the live arena and be able to cover it for you as well, but the damn thing is never open for me. Every time I'm in game and trying to play, it says active in whatever hours. And then by the time that period comes, I'm doing something else and I'm working on another project. So I am trying to test the live arena. I, I, I worry that the live arena is going to be a little bit too defensive. It's going to be too long of battles and it's going to be really a slog because it's not like the classic arena where you can kind of try to counter a team and fight. It's like you're both trying to counter each other. And there's so many champions in game that you can typically do that pretty well. And so if it's a fair fight, I just feel like it's going to be really hard to, 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 to like get matches over with. So I think that could be something to, to, to watch here. And I'm going to need to do more testing and do more fights to get a more accurate opinion for sure. But yeah, that is what we need to get covered in this one. And I'm excited to break down the forge pass and get you lots more content here on the channel, talking about the craziness and the Hydra and the forge pass and everything going on this week. So that'll do it for me on this one. Remember to subscribe on your way out. If you enjoy daily rage, Shadow legends content, I'll see you soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.